For six weeks, in partnership with Morrison's, each Thursday we're uploading a new recipe to the Emotion Cookbook. Today we are making a fantastic cherry pie with a gorgeous caramelised lattice topping. Welcome to My Emotion Kitchen, brought to you by Morrison's Emotion Cookbook. If you've missed any of the other videos in the playlist already, there should be a link right here. Uh, and also in the description uh, down below for more emotion-inspired recipes, including this devastatingly awesome cherry pie we're making today, inspired by my mum. Affection is, is this. My mum, right? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and once you made this cherry pie that just blew my mind, and this is just kind of like another version of it, which is so mm. good, you must try it. Also got um, some pictures of me growing up, right? I have. Where was that? That was your first birthday. Good, that I feel like I'm like singing. Oh, there it is again with that wonderful cake that I made. That's pretty good. Oh, Ooh, this is that's a favourite. <laughs> Look at that hair. <laughs> Bit of frizz, style. frizzies, I don't know the, you know, the, that the was the That was the in thing. Like a blonde afro. Another one. Another one eating. There's Just a general there. theme here. Yeah. Eating again. Mm. You always liked cake and cherry pie. And that's me on my police bike. Yeah. I think she always wanted me to be a policeman, but here I am. But anyhow, we're going to make this amazing cherry pie. You're going to love it. You're going to help me with the steps. I am. But here are all the ingredients you need. Hit pause on the video now. Write all those ingredients down. This recipe is all about affection. So in the description down below, there's a link to the Morrison's Emotion Cookbook for more affection recipes. To make short crust pastry, uh, my mum used to do the old school, getting the flour, rubbing the butter between your fingers. But I personally find that a little bit like niggly. I quite enjoy doing that. Yeah. I quite enjoy feeling the texture. You can do that. There's yeah. a choice. There is. So yeah, what you would do is get your butter and rub it between your flour until you get crumbs. But the other way is to use a stand mixer and add the flour. This is 300 grams of plain flour into there. And this is our butter. It's cold and been cubed. <laughs> there we go. It's in. Now the stand mixer is going to do all the hard work. Do you want a low setting first of all? Otherwise, flour will go everywhere. Hands free. Hands free cooking. <laughs> I'm quite impressed. <laughs> so just let it do its thing, but if the flour goes too high up the edges, use a spatula and just push it down, but do that in between the whizzes. All oh, right, Mum, we need to add some water into that, but mm. are you convinced by that method or are you still old school with your fingers and thumbs? I think I'll just keep to what I know, but okay. it's looking good. It's fine, either way it will work, but this is some cold water. We're going to add a tablespoon in at a time because we've got that bread crummy look, but by doing that, cranking it back up again, start slow again, it'll bring it together, kind of like a Play-Doh texture. Wow, Mum! Look at that! That is awesome. That last speed set you do a little bit higher so it beats it together, look, because it is a bit stronger. So it needs to really be beaten around that bowl. But we just pop this up, and our pastry is done. We're just going to scatter some more flour onto our clean surface. Okay. Dump that in there. Do you want to give that a little knead, Mum? Oh, okay. The stand mixer has made it so smooth already. It's just to get it one little final encouragement before we wrap it in clean film. That's good, Mum. You don't need to put much more flour into it, it's just a little bit, as I say, to stop it sticking to your surface. And look, there we go, that's me with cling film. It's like having a magician's assistant today, all glamorous. <laughs> um, we're going to shove we that go. in our fridge now for an hour to firm up. It has been an hour in the fridge, and in that time mm. we've reminisced about affection stories between my mum and I. Well, you used to love dressing up, didn't you? And you put on my red boots. Oh, that was so funny. They came right up over your knees. That was last weekend. We're just getting it in flour a little bit just to knead it. And what we want to do is have it, because we're not going to need all of this, or maybe about two thirds. And the rest is going to help to make some lattice strips towards the end. So we'll just put that to one side up there. And hopefully all of this dough will be enough to line our tin. It's a loose bottom tin, so we need to get it nice and thin. Do you want to roll that out for me, Mum? Oh, I could do. All righty. Nice and thin. It's got to be enough to go over the base and up around the sides as well when you trim off any excess. The dough is rolled out fantastically. Not a perfect circle, that doesn't matter, as we say, because we can trim off the excess. What we're gonna do is take our tin, remember it is loose bottomed, and we're gonna get it onto our rolling pin, like so. I'm just gonna lift it, use this to help drape it. Okay, you bring that across, yeah. Look at this, working together as a team. And then just kind of lift it, press it lightly in. That's it, all right. So you don't want to be like too harsh on it, give it like a little bit of slack, but all this, we're just going to trim that off with our knife. If I hold it still. Thank you. <laughs> so all these bits of cut-offs, again, we're going to need those uh, later to make the lattice strips, but then if we have anything later, you can make these really nice little uh, jam parcels where you just make a cup in a cupcake tin, serve some jam in it, bake it, the kids love it. Yeah. I used to do that for me. I did. Yeah, that's how I learned it. Yeah. 
So we'll work on that in just a moment, but another step we need to do is something called blind baking. So it just starts to give the pastry just like an initial bake. So we need to line this little basey bit with parchment paper. My mum has cut the most accurate circle I've ever seen of baking parchment. Right, let's place it in. Yeah. And we need to weigh it down. Okay. So normally you would use baking beans, but we're going to use uh, some red lentils, which work just as well because you can mm. bake them. It's just going to weigh it down like so. Give it a little shimmy. So that's looking good. We're now going to bake it for 15 minutes for the blind bake process to begin. We're going to grab that excess dough and a board, okay? So boom, down that goes. Uh, a little bit more flour. And we're going to roll it out again to get it nice and thin and create even strips for our lattice. You want to give that a go? I can certainly do that. Remember, we want to roll it out to the whole uh, width of the tin so that it can go from one side to the other. And Mum's done a good job there. Just remember to keep it a little floured underneath so that it doesn't stick uh, to the surface. We're just going to cut off those excess bits first. So we'll keep that to one side and we'll get a slightly sharper knife to make them nice and accurate. Maybe about an inch wide strips. Perfect. So one of those is done. Get about eight of those, please. There we are. We've got our eight slices there. They're ready. We're going to keep them in the fridge for the time being. So it has been uh, 15 minutes in there blind baking. We just need to get these lentils out now. We now put it back in the oven for another 15 minutes, but with the parchment removed just to bake the base. Okay, so the second bake is just about coming to a finish. We're going to make our filling, right? Are you excited, Mum? Yeah, I'm really excited. It's, it's coming looking together, good, yeah. Isn't it? We've got a frozen black forest mix. This is still mm. frozen, but it will thaw out anyway as it bakes through. Uh, this is cherry pie mix and two lemons. We're just going to get the juice from that, whiz it together in a bowl. You want to do that for me? I certainly can. I love dark fruit. Frozen fruit's going in there. It is. Oh, so Look good. Different colours. Mm. And then we're just going to juice up our lemons. It's really going to add a nice little bit of zing. Pour that like so. Mix it through, get uh, all the berries combined with that lemon juice. So good. Right, so that's had its second bake and our filling is ready. It is time to fill it up with the berries. Let's do so this. Excited. It looks lovely. So just spread that round nice and even. So our filling's in there, Mum. How are you feeling? Excited? Yes, yeah, looking really good. The strips you did earlier are going to go on top now. Um, we've also got uh, some beaten egg and demerara sugar. So we'll start with uh, one strip first of all, and we'll just lay it just slightly in the middle like so. There okay. we go. And then I'll just cut off the excess with some food scissors. But you could lattice this if you want to. Yeah, like, kind of like doing a basket weave. You could totally do that if you want. Press the pastry just gently into the sides like that. And then we do the opposite way so we just go across that way and then straight yes yeah, it it's gonna look great that's on there all laid out looking fantastic so we're going to get this egg wash now brush it all over those pastry strips the egg's going to do that work get that real nice color finish on there every little strip there so now we can sprinkle the sugar up and down the pastry look bits like that, that skill that's going to sort of caramelize and brown as well with it there we go, the pie is all done, looking fantastic. It's now got to go in the oven for around about 45 to 50 minutes so we can reminisce some more <laughs> and we cannot wait to see what it comes out like. Righty ho then folks, so we have let that cool down in the tin for five to 10 minutes and then released it and just sat it down on the board. It is looking so good. It looks amazing. Right, happy? Mm, the very. smell, the caramelization with the sugar. Oh, let's take a slice out and have a taste. So we've just cut into it, taking the first wedge out of that. Oh my gosh. In fact, let's just place it down right on the board here. Let's just, just get it right there because I'm so keen to eat it. Uh, we whipped up some cream to one side just while we were waiting for it to cool down. Just something to sit along with it. Oh, there we go. Looking Do you have good. a taste? Oh, yes. Oh, here we go. Now that's proper affection. We're sharing it there. Mmm. That is amazing. There we are then, folks, our recipe for affection. And what a stonker it was indeed, Mum, huh? It was delicious. So, so good. And we want to know what recipes mean affection to you guys. So leave a comment down below with the recipe and why it could mean bringing your mum closer together in the kitchen. And we did well as a we team did. there. And you could also win a prize. You could win a copy of Barry's book and some Morrison's vouchers. That's right. We will announce the winner at the end card of the next video. Don't forget to check out the description for the link to the Morrison's Emotion Cookbook. There's more recipes involving affection as well, so get fully involved in that. But for now, give this one a go too, and we will see you next time.